and purposeful misinformation campaign so that the Americans will not truly will not truly speak out against the government and its failings against the American people. How is that making America great again? to appease all these liberals, whatever they are, back in their colleges, smoking weed or whatever, not being productive with their lives. He wants to get all of these um, immigrants, and also known as possible terrorists, out of his country so that he can defend his homeland, um, like he wants every other American to be able to do. The right to defend their family, the right to defend their values, the right to defend their homelands, as he defends his possibly with force, or possibly with not without, depending on, you know, your views in the Second Amendment, but you should be allowed to do that. I think we know that America is not, indeed, great for minorities at this time, but I want to be specifically talking about how it has become worse for the people who have voted for him and what their future will look like. I'll start with what we all think of when we think of the Trump voter. The rural people work in working class jobs who feel disillusioned with modern society. Donald Trump, one of the main things he promised to do is bring back jobs such as coal jobs or manufacturing jobs. Jobs which he said have been taken out of America and brought to countries that, that are in the third world. He promises that he'll bring them back. The thing that is, these jobs are gone, and not necessarily to the third world. A lot of these working class jobs are being completely automated. We know that the trucking industry, for one, is completely dying. So, does that really help the people who voted for him? Being cold out on college campuses and how scary that must be. But no one talks about how, for example, um, BDS of Israel has become completely illegal in many states of the U.S. and that is uh, the fact that Obamacare is kind of losing its grip on the U.S. healthcare system. Well, because of the lack of Republican majority in the House and the Senate, um, Republicans really haven't been able to push through any real reform changing um, uh, the healthcare system from what it was during the Obamacare days. So the opioid crisis is really kind of petering all of that. Uh, and second of all, I'd like to touch on uh, race and honest, they mentioned coal. Um, and although Donald Trump, he believes in coal, but he doesn't believe in it for the reasons that it's a good form of energy resource. He, he believes in it for the fact that it, it employs thousands, uh, nearly hundreds of thousands of US low income jobs. And those, those are his voter base. So you can understand where he's coming from when he wants, says he wants to bring coal jobs uh, back to the United States. But I'll uh, elaborate a little bit more. Um, on that in my first point, keeping uh, on. So first of all, tr Donald Trump is being called uh, the champion of Wall Street. Um, Wall Street and the no, uh, Wall Street and the United States economy has been booming um, ever since um, Donald Trump had taken over. They've had year on year. Inspiring. They were there before Trump, and hopefully, if the ISIS guys don't win, they'll be there after. <laughs> and that's not to do. Like, yeah, he's built his tower, but like Trump or no Trump. There's like, there's that. You have to really take a step back and like, these are all well, around. Yep. Yeah. Why do you think Trump is imposing bans on Muslims? Who do you think caused the Twin Towers to fall? That's what he's doing. He's preventing people who did that from coming back in, even though they're dead. But the people that still do that are trying to get into her and he's trying to prevent that to prevent another tragedy such as 9 11. Why do you think he's voting in the travel bans? It's all very good. Fully, like, accept the whole of and it's just my main thing. That's not really what I'm here to discuss. I'm basically saying he didn't make America great again because it was always great. And I think anyone to deny that is kind of a bit like you should probably get your priorities in straight because it is the greatest land in the world, which inspires freedom. You know, we got man to the moon. Like think like I know we weren't there, but think about you know your grandparents or your parents who were there. And like think about all that means to people. America isn't really just a thing, it's an ideal, which is every which every country should strive to be, because like, it's kind of the de facto, like, um, 
Okay, to assess the city president presenting an unmitigated disaster would be a dangerous mistake. I'm going to explain this to my two main points, but I advise that this course is a fundamental lack of change. But first of all, a point of information on um, the first speaker who talked about this course. So we heard from the first speaker that the president is such a bad person and a bad politician, uh, and he's so bad in his job that we've achieved something more important in this country. That's kind of a strange point to make. But, um, even if we concede that destroying all trust in every major institution of media and government is actually worthwhile for the sake of creating this political discourse and engagement in democracy, uh, we're not actually seeing politicians from both sides uh, of the aisle coming together to discuss uh, these important issues. We're not seeing the discussion that this massive sacrifice has been made uh, for the sake of. So this point doesn't really make sense in our minds. Um, the days of John McCain coming together with Joe Biden across the aisle are gone. People are drifting towards politicians like Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, both populists on the right, uh, out of fear and out of aggression towards their opposition. Uh, issues that aren't actually being discussed, and the product of this great return to democracy and discussion uh, has, not in fact <laughs> been, um, has not in fact been uh, a, a more enlightened uh, America, one with more discussion, one with more engagement with democracy, being one in which people are turning away from the discussion and turning towards the militaristic uh, ideals uh, of pushing their political uh, opinions because they are so fearful of the opposition that they're facing. Uh, issues aren't being discussed, in fact, and the product of this great return to democracy and discourse is what about a weeks long uh, government shutdown because people cannot discuss these issues, because people are, are incapable of actually having a discourse that is supposedly being created. Uh, yeah, just going back here uh, very far to the rebuttal. And surely what actually makes America great is the idea that you know you can have those great rather than just poor governments, you know, do you know, health care. Okay, so first of all, that exactly illustrated why the status quo wasn't creating political discourse. You just said that people are so happy and content, but they don't really feel the need to get aggressive about it. Uh, and second of all, you're not exactly showing us how it's productive to society for people to be engaging in militaristic political activity because they're so afraid of actually engaging in the discourse that existed beforehand. So we're not really seeing what the essence of that point is. So that's the argument of these people, because 15 minutes for us meet, um, I mean, it's basically like doing your homework. Just as a teacher, coming around, pick it up. I mean, go ahead, because no, just me. Um, uh, so, uh, does Trump not have a right to free speech too? I mean, is not how free speech works. Uh, um, uh, surely, anything that's good for uh, surely anything that promotes discussion is just generally good for democracy. Make our Danny once again, which was that the. Just because something furthers discourse or you have something which is terrible, we're able to learn from it because of how terrible it was. We don't really think that that holds up. But if you don't really do something terrible to know that it was, in, that it was wrong to do in the first place. <coughs> Secondly, uh, I'd like to talk about the economy. And we're really talking about the greatness of America here. And America is for, a government of the people, for the people, by the people. But the quality of lives of the people in America matters a lot in determining how great something is. If America is so economically prosperous, why are they worse than ever before when it comes to matters like opioid crisis and the quality of life, or the actual base of uh, base who put Trump in office in the first place? Uh, now to the first point, really, which is how harnessing people's anger and making them satisfied and rallying them is different to make, is different to actually create a meaningful social change. As my partner Oscar said, it's been very easy throughout history to take people who have been fundamentally downtrodden and who have been oppressed and to take that rage and direct against the problems which are directly causing the anguish which they feel, which is poverty, structural, structural inequality, and lack of opportunities. It's all well and good to say that the America and the economy is booming and that there are new jobs being created all the time, but due to automation and things like that, the jobs available for these people in the rural areas are vanishing at a rate which they cannot be replenished. And you can't... Point of information. No. Uh, Objection. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to move on to the point made uh, by Oscar as well, which is about the bed and in fact the conduct of a president. There has been an evident moral decline, there has been an evident moral decline in the standard that we accept. I mean, in the 1990s, as Oscar said, Bill Clinton was impeached. Um, we're not here to say what he did or how he was going about his business, but it's a long way to go to be commending someone for being able to read off a teleprompter and making that likened to enacting meaningful social change with regard to say who's a great leader and who isn't. That's really not what we're here to say. 